Hello. This may seem a strange place to start a video on synthesizers, but in fact I'm here in the middle of the Hertfordshire countryside at Museum Studios to have a look at some of the world's best loved synthesizers. Come with me. Right. Well, here we are inside the Museum Studios and I'm with its owner, uh, Martin Newcomb. Martin, um, how long has the studio been running? The studio's been running for about four years now. Right. Yeah. It did start off as a museum, but yeah. uh, I found that more and more people wanted to actually do recordings down here. And yes, evolved. I can imagine, yeah. Well, the, the equipment here is absolutely stunning. It really is. Can you um, tell us, I mean, this is a Moog, I recognise this. Can you tell us something about yes, it? Yes, this is the Moog 55. Right. This progressed from the earlier Moogs, uh, the 3 Series, which had the 901s. Yeah. Uh, this has the 921s, which are more stable uh, oscillators. Right, OK. And generally speaking, it's just better built. Yeah, yeah. So, the Polyfusion, this looks quite similar to the one over there, the Moog that we've just looked at, actually. Yeah, well, so the story goes, Alan Pierce and Ron Folkman, who used to work with uh, Moog, yeah. got a bit frustrated with the way things were progressing, oh, right. and they decided to form their own company, yeah. basing their designs on the Moog idea, basically improving it yeah. in, uh, in many different ways. It's a far more uh, stable machine Is than it? Moog. Yes, yeah. that's right. It started about 1975, they started to uh, produce oh, these. Oh, right. Yeah, they're fascinating looking instruments. And it must be so heavy because it's made out of some sort of stove enamel metal case. It is, it, it, it is. Huge yeah, heavy. it is made of uh, metal as opposed to the wood. Yeah, yeah. So are there any main differences on here between this and the mode? I can see we've got a selection of uh, little switches down here. That's right. But the main difference is on the oscillators, for instance, you can actually select the pitch with push button. This is a very good idea because with the Moog you've got to select a switch that you've got to go through from 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, but on here you can jump from 2 to sort of the 250 uh, with one push of the finger. It's, yeah. it's a far better idea. Yeah. So this is an old friend of mine. This is the ARC 2600. Uh, can you tell me something about this one, Martin? Yes, yeah, so this is one of the um, more portable modulars designed in 1970 when it first came out. It's like a whole studio, really. You've yeah. got all the different aspects from preamp right the way through to the amplifier there. Yes. Yes, I remember um, going to one of the first seminars on these and uh, it was quite fascinating because uh, people just didn't know what they were. They had no idea. It's something so new. No, well, it came out at around about the same time as, say, the, the Mini Moog. Yeah. But obviously this looks far more uh, scientific. Oh, it does indeed, yeah. Yeah. It wasn't sort of designed uh, especially for musicians when you yeah. first look at it. It can mm. be very off-putting, but uh, it's like a lot of these synths, though. Once you find out the basics of how to actually sort of string the sound together. Then, uh, exactly, yeah. Stevie Wonder used one of these, didn't he, for a long time. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One thing I remember about it, it's got today's size of uh, jack socket on it. Um, some of the old Moogs and the Polyfusion, as, as you uh, showed us before, had the, the large standard jacks. Yeah, the quarter inch jacks. Yes, yeah, this that's is far right. better size to use, actually. You can get your fingers in there quite neatly. Well, that's right. Obviously, if this had quarter inch jacks, the actual unit itself would have had to have been twice the size. Indeed, yeah. So you've got all that bulk for the amount of synthesizing yes, power. Yes, that's yeah, right. Yeah. Mm. So, Roland System 700. Tell me more, please. Right, it was made in about 1977, 1978. Yeah. Uh, it had the added advantage to work on all the other modular systems that had come out before it. As you can see, it's got just about everything. It certainly um, has. You've got sample and holds, ring mods, yeah. a reverb unit, phase shifters, um, you've got uh, analog switches. Oh, right. It's, uh, it's a very vast system. It's a sequencer. complete, complete studio. Yeah, this sequencer really is... Um, it's absolutely massive. Yeah, it is. It has, it's got a nice uh, few little uh, features on it that other sequences yeah. haven't got. So you can actually divide down the actual notes. So you've got sort of half notes, quarter notes, right the way down to a 30 second note. That's incredible. Step. Yeah, that, that's something I've never seen actually. No, I don't think any yeah. of the other uh, sequences brought out previously have had that feature. Right. And the manual buttons here, what are these doing? Can you sort of fire a that's right, yes, yeah. you can. You can actually bring it back to whatever step you want. So you could actually play it using buttons and change the sequence. You could, yes, yeah. if you wanted to, you can do wow. it that way, yeah. That's incredible. Now this one is just incredible. 
you should see some of the names on the modules on this. Martin, tell me all about it, right, Well, this is a Buchler 200. He yeah. started making these after his 100 series, which he started working on in 1967. This started coming out in around about the early 70s. Really? But you've got some amazing uh, modules here, like the Source of Uncertainty. <laughs> the Source of Uncertainty. Which yeah, throws out that. random voltages. Yeah. So you're not quite sure what's going to happen with that one. Now, there's, there's one synthesizer that we haven't looked at yet, the Phoenix. This is the famous Phoenix synthesizer, and it's made by a company in Cornwall called Analog Systems. It's brand new, and it's absolutely huge. There are 24 oscillators, and at the moment it's set up so that you can use it as an 8-voice polyphonic if you want to. Thank you. 